A major part of the SpriteKit framework that we've already mentioned is the update loop that is provided for us. And we now want to take a quick look at how it works and what's exactly part of it. We can implement five different methods that our update loop calls for every frame and we can override them in any scene class. We will now talk about them one by one. So we start with the first one, which is the main method, just called update. If I just start typing update in my class, I will get the method proposed and can just hit enter to add the override method like this. This is the first method that gets called and initiates the update loop. So let's just add a print statement here that outputs one. We will use this method to write code that should be executed before rendering the next frame. Before the frame is rendered, however, four more methods get called. After finishing the update method, all actions are evaluated. For example, animations set the next frame, movements update node positions, and so on. After that is done, the did evaluate actions method gets called, which we can add just like update and with it I want to print 2. Now physics gets simulated, meaning gravity is applied to any body that is affected by it or if two physics body collide, the calculations get done. As soon as it's done, did simulate physics gets called, which is the third method of our update loop. You might have guessed it, this time we will print 3 to our console. Moving on, the next thing that happens is that constraints in our scene get handled. For example, if two nodes are connected and need updates or anything like that. After that's done, the did apply constraints method gets called and we will print a 4 to the console in it. Now all that's missing is one method called did finish update, which will conclude the update loop. So let's override it just like the others and print a 5. The update loop is now complete and the SK view will render a new frame and draw it to our scene. Ideally on a device all of this will run 60 times per second, the ominous 60 frames per second, that are a known measure in game development and gaming itself. The simulator will probably not even on a really fast computer reach these frames per second since it must emulate the whole iOS environment on top of running the game. Still, it will be run pretty fast, so if you would just run it like this, it would heavily spam our console. We do not want that, so let's add something to the end of the finish update method, which will get called last. I want to set the property is paused of our scene that determines whether or not the update loop is running. So if I set this to true here, our update loop should run exactly one time and then stop. If I now run the app, I should see the number 1 through 5 in the right order in our console. Since the update loop calls the methods in this order. Then our loop will stop and we won't get any further output. The app started and we can take a look at the console which shows us exactly what we expected. In reality, most of the time we will use the update method to add continuous changes in our game. There are, however, situations where it makes more sense to use another method like did simulate physics. It really heavily depends on the specific situation. I think it is important though to at least once learn how the update loop of our game engine works and how we are able to use it.